In the news this morning, Andrei Sakharov, the brilliant Soviet physicist and human rights crusader, has died at the age of 68 from an apparent heart attack. Democracy has returned to Chile after 16 years of military rule. In pro football, playoff berths are on the line as the NFL's regular season enters its next to last weekend. And another snowstorm is developing in the mid-Atlantic states. It's expected to move into the northeast later in the day. I'm John Palmer. This is Friday, December the 15th. This is NBC News at Sunrise with John Palmer. Good morning. They said of him he was more than a man, more than a scientist. He was one of the great men of the century. Andrei Sakharov, who helped the Soviet Union develop the hydrogen bomb and who was later awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his human rights campaign, died today in Moscow of an apparent heart attack. He was 68. NBC News correspondent Robert Abernathy reports now from Moscow. This was Andrei Sakharov's last speech yesterday, campaigning right to the end of his life for more democracy against repression in the Soviet Union. He was clearly tired. He had suffered from heart disease. He was 68. Today, admirers stood vigil outside his apartment building, and his fellow people's deputies mourned him. He was the conscience of the people. He always understand that there are things more important than your own life. Just three years ago, Sakharov was permitted to return to Moscow from exile inside the Soviet Union. He'd been punished for his opposition to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Sakharov was a physicist who helped design the Soviet hydrogen bomb, but he became best known as a moral leader, and for his support of human rights, he won the Nobel Prize for Peace. As a people's deputy, Sakharov was a persistent critic of Mikhail Gorbachev, even this week pushing for an end to the Communist Party's monopoly on power. The Soviet people recognized Sakharov's conviction and courage. Sakharov, they had chanted earlier this year, Sakharov. Bob Abernethy, NBC News, Moscow. In Czechoslovakia this morning, the army is joining the forces for change, calling on the government to dismantle what's left of the Iron Curtain. The country's new defense minister told reporters in Prague this morning that he would like to completely open borders with West Germany and Austria. The border with Austria started to come down just last month. And democracy is returning to Chile after 16 years of military rule. Chileans on Thursday elected Patricio Alwin, an opposition candidate, as their new president. He takes office in March, succeeding Augusto Pinochet, who came to power in 1970 after leading a military coup against socialist president Salvatore Allende. In this country, a warm welcome for American Jennifer Cosolo, who returned to her Connecticut home Thursday after more than two weeks in a Salvadoran jail. NBC News correspondent Stephen Fraser reports. Home in Thomaston, Connecticut, Jennifer Casolo greeted old neighbors and friends who had waited for her in sub-freezing cold. And the first letters that I received were the ones from the town of Thomas. They came while I was in a cell in the National Police. And I went from laughter to tears, laughter to tears. Most people here have long been aware of Jennifer Casolo's activism in El Salvador. She's a special person. She's special to all of us just because she's from this town, whether we know her or not. I happen to know her. We're to stand out in the cold to see Jennifer come home, to see an American who is willing to stand up for their rights, to stand up against other countries, and to fight for what they believe in. The entire town is decorated for her return, but now neighbors plan to leave Jennifer Casolo alone with her family, physically, if not emotionally, distant from the Latin American war that was her preoccupation for years. Stephen Frazier, NBC News, Thomaston, Connecticut. In other news this morning, Europeans are being warned about the latest threat to their computers. Technically, it's not a computer virus, but something experts call a Trojan horse, a hidden program that plays havoc with computer memory files. NBC's Tom Pettit explains in this report from London. This is the culprit aimed at fouling up personal computers using soft disks. Troublemaking signals are hidden in an informational disk about AIDS sent to people on computer mailing lists in England and elsewhere. It is not known who masterminded this scheme, which literally can jam PCs, so stored data cannot be retrieved without sending a fee to the sender. 
Robert Waltzy of the magazine CW Communications in London. The maliciousness of it, in one sense, is using the AIDS scare and, and the idea of the disease to, you, to go and try to extort money. Stock markets, businesses, and other institutions which use personal computers extensively are alarmed by this latest dirty trick. John Mayock of the London Stock Exchange, which has not been affected. It virtually leaves us all open to attack. In the meantime, the best advice came from an anonymous London trader. You must be off your head, he said, if you get an unsolicited disc and put it in your machine. Tom Pettit, NBC News, London. Alaska's Redoubt volcano is quiet this morning, but scientists say it could erupt again at any time. The volcano, about 115 miles southwest of Anchorage, erupted yesterday for the first time in 23 years. It blew volcanic ash seven miles high, prompting the FAA to issue a warning to planes flying in the area. In sports, a big weekend in the NFL and a big night for a rookie in the NBA. Don Crickey's report is next on NBC News at Sunrise. Body panels will never rest. The seats can be arranged to seat up to seven. And ask yourself, have you ever traveled like this before? Meet the new Family Lumina APV. When it comes to new ideas for the family, nobody's winning like. The heartbeat of America, that's today's Chevrolet. I've got a what? I really do. It's it's inconceivable. How could I possibly have a cavity? This is devastating. If your little kid has a cavity, we've got news for you. Over the years, one toothpaste has helped prevent more cavities than all others combined. Yay! Not surprisingly, it's the toothpaste more dentists recommend. Crest. This is a totally incredible visit. Yes! It's great! Crest. It's hard on cavities and easy on you. I'm out of here. football fans would say every weekend is very important in football, but this is an especially important weekend. Here with details, Don Crickey. Morning, Don. Good morning, John. The NFL begins the 15th weekend of play with two games tomorrow. The NFC playoff teams have probably been decided, but other than Denver in the West, the AFC playoff matchups should all go down to the 16th and final week. The New York Giants effort last Sunday in a win at Denver was highlighted by linebacker Gary Reason's hit on Bobby Humphrey. To stop a goal line challenge by the Broncos, tomorrow the Giants are home to play Dallas. A win assures New York of a playoff spot. And a Denver win tomorrow at Phoenix will give the Broncos the home field through the AFC playoffs. Other teams that can win playoff spots with victories this weekend are the Vikings, the Eagles, the Rams, the Bills, and the Oilers. There are reports the University of Pittsburgh has asked football coach Mike Gottfried to resign, even though he's never had a losing season in four years at Pitt. The fastest rising star in the NBA is first-year center David Robinson of the San Antonio Spurs. Last night, the former All-American from the Naval Academy went against Akeem Olajuwon of Houston. Robinson rejected Houston's Otis Thorpe, but Akeem was there to follow up with a stuff. Robinson outscored Olajuwon 19-15. Here's two by the San Antonio rookie. Akeem had the rebounding edge. Robinson and the Spurs won the game 104-100. Other NBA winners included Washington, Chicago and Red Hot Indiana. Dick Persace has done a tremendous job with that team. The toughest business in the world is professional boxing. Long term, there are only a few winners, very few survivors sometimes. Last night in Missouri, knockout punches were the order of the evening. Riddick Bowe took out Charlie Woolard. Don Marshall was KO'd while still on his feet by an opponent from Samoa. All this in the name of sport and a very nominal payday. We thought this was a tough business. Yes, indeed. You're off to where? Cincinnati. Okay, have a good time. The Ohio Valley, below zero. Behave yourself. All right. All right. <laughs>
The biggest coastal snowstorm of the season is taking aim at the mid-Atlantic states before moving into the Northeast and New England. Joe Whitty's national forecast is next on NBC News at Sunrise. Lots of long hours and hard days wrapped up in this one. The Pontiac Transport SE took it all the way from the design studio to reality. You factor it all in, safety, comfort, performance, then make sure it ends up beautiful. You know, I think we did it. GM has been recognized for design excellence by the Industrial Designer Society of America more than any other U.S. company. says no to cocoa. In the mountains of Colombia, they celebrate the land for creating the richest coffee of the world. New Maxwell House Colombian Supreme Coffee. Regular or decaffeinated, 100% Colombian richness in every drop. My mother used to say, Mary Ann, I want you to do all the things I never did. Well, she never took care of her high blood pressure. And that's why I take care of mine, so that I can do all the things she never did, like living past 50 to see my children grow up. Do what your doctor says. Treat your high blood pressure and do the things they never did. Encouraging your kids to make little decisions when they're young builds their self-esteem because it teaches them that their judgment counts. And self-esteem is the best defense they'll have against getting talked into taking drugs or dropping out of school. The more you think about it, the more you know that if we want our kids to be able to make those big decisions later, we've got to support the little ones they make now. President Bush, with some help from three-year-old granddaughter Marshall at the National Christmas Tree last night in Washington, the 35-foot living spruce sits on the ellipse across the street from the White House, where more than 12,000 people witnessed the event and some pretty cold temperatures. In his remarks, the president encouraged people to help others and said, this is the Christmas we have awaited for 50 years, referring to dramatic political changes in Eastern Europe. Some dramatic changes in our weather, if you like snow. Here's Joe Woody. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, John. That indeed, for sure, because that plunge of bitter cold air over the Great Plains is setting the stage for another eastern snowstorm, and time-lapse shows it quite well. From space, the cold air diving over the plains, pushing snow clouds over the Ohio Valley. Wind chills are in the dangerous 50 below zero range for the northern plains as that cold air dives over the plains and heads to the east coast. Now, winter storm advisories extend from Indiana to New England for today and tonight. Travelers will find six inches in the Ohio Valley later today, and snow begins late today, tonight, along the East Coast. By tomorrow morning, folks will be digging out of six to 12 inches along the eastern seaboard. The Rockies can expect six inches of snow today. The far west, partly sunny skies. Florida will be in the 60s and 70s with partly sunny skies there. Highs today near or below zero in nine states for the Great Plains. Those are afternoon highs. And that is my frigid forecast for today. Now, here's what's happening in your neighborhood. For New York City, snow begins this evening, four to seven inches possible by tomorrow morning. Washington, D.C., snow begins this afternoon, two to four by Saturday morning. Coming up next, more on this big chill, which will last through the weekend. John? We'll certainly look forward to that. Thank you, Joe. The news continues in just a minute. You're watching NBC News at Sunrise. I'm Jane Pauley. Later this morning on Today, Jim Fowler has some Christmas pet ideas. I'm Deborah Norville. Also, Paul Newman, Dustin Hoffman, and Dan Aykroyd. This morning, you know, you read this. Why do people drive 100, 150, even 200 miles or more to buy their carpet from P&J Carpet in Boonville? Why does P&J Carpet sell more than any other single carpet store in North Mississippi? Why is P&J Carpet in the top 100 dealers in the entire Southeast the largest carpet mill in the country? Why? Because P&J offers the highest quality at the lowest prices anywhere. Try the rest, then come buy from the best. As Perk Perry says, you can stand on it. P&J Carpet, Highway 45 South, Boonville. Play Jeopardy and get that Mississippi spirit. 
Here are some of the stories we're following this Friday morning on NBC News at Sunrise. Soviet dissident Andrei Sakharov is dead. Democracy returns to Chile after 16 years of military dictatorship. And in business news this morning, big layoffs ahead for U.S. automakers. Details coming up. Newark, New Jersey is plagued with the same problems as other inner cities in this country. Poverty, crime, drug and alcohol abuse. But it also has people who struggle to make a good and decent life for themselves and their families. NBC's Bill Schechner takes another look this morning at one of those families. On the south corner, a new food store opens. The first new business this poor neighborhood has seen in years. In this store, another first. The first job for 11-year-old Marcus Pomalis. I got a job because I want to help my mother. To do what? Buy some clothes, some food, buy everything for Dame plato. In this family, taking responsibility is not unusual. It is expected. That's what you got to buy. That's the best. Ruth Pomalis has 10 children. Nine of them live at home. The young ones are in grade school. The oldest, Lydia, works in a daycare center. Hector is an all-star ball player. Ruthie is the first in the family to go to college. The people I know, they haven't accomplished nothing in their, in their life, you know. They, either they're on welfare or having kids and no job and all that. I don't want to be like that. There is so much disorder and temptation in neighborhoods like this. Families and their dignity are under attack. Defending this family, Ruth Pomalas. I know that my children will run into children with bad habits, maybe even right in front of my house. But I know they won't do what the bad kids do, because they respect me. Well, my friends, you know, if they go, go ahead and go do drugs, I just go away from them. That's how I've been, I grew up. Hector is 16. He says sometimes his friends tease him. And they was like, oh, your mother got you under her belt. And I'd be like, yeah, that's all right. And I'd just ignore him. Let them talk all they want. As long as I know I got a home to go to, I got a family who's waiting for me, uh, and I got a lot of responsibilities. ¿Qué pasó? Ruth Pomalis separated from her husband years ago. She works making sandwiches for a lunch wagon. She has lived in the neighborhood for years. One more, Mama? She is not superhuman. She oh. simply has not given ground. If I don't go to school, and she finds it out, well, I'll be in big trouble. Noelle is 11. Is it good she's strict with you? It's a good thing. Why do you say that? Well, if she wasn't strict with me, I'd be like the other guy. And I don't want to be like the other guy. Why not? I don't want to go to jail. Noelle knows a lot about jail. His oldest brother, Junior, has been in a state prison four years, serving a 30-year term without parole for murder. He got in a fight with his street friends and killed another teenager. He was 17. Yeah, I miss him. I don't want to miss another brother. I don't want to lose another brother. Losing a child to the streets is very easy here. Ruth Pomalis shields her family with the example of her oldest son. I always tell them, look what happened to your brother. My wish is that they will not get into trouble and that they will stay good. I know they're going to hang in there. A struggling family in a troubled neighborhood. That is what life is like in places like Four Corners, where hope and despair battle every day. Bill Schechner, NBC News, Newark. I'll have more news. Tom Herman will take a look at Wall Street. Alan Abelson is here, and Joe Witte has another look at that frosty forecast when we return on NBC News at sunrise. The death of Soviet dissident Andrei Sakharov tops our news this morning. The 68-year-old Nobel Prize winner and human rights activist died at his Moscow home last night, apparently of a heart attack. The Soviet parliament observed a minute of silence today in honor of the man the Soviets sent into exile some 10 years ago. He will be buried in a place of honor in a Moscow cemetery tomorrow. In Kentucky, the trial of Larry Mahoney continues today. He's charged with 27 counts of murder in the deadliest drunk driving accident in our nation's history. As NBC's Dan Molina reports this morning, 
Mahoney used his testimony yesterday to speak to the families of the victims. Much of what Larry Mahoney had to say was predictable. He admitted he'd been drinking, but denied he was drunk on that tragic evening. His defense has centered on claims that the bus had been unsafe. There have been assertions that had the fuel tank been positioned differently, had the seat cushions been made of fire retardant material, had the windows opened properly, the deaths might not have occurred. But Larry Mahoney said that he wasn't trying to find an excuse for what happened, and he took an opportunity to directly address the families of those killed. I want you to know that I really am sorry. I mean this. And I don't know of anything else that I can say to you. Around this town, people were watching on cable television. I think he's very sorry for what he's done. But, of course, he cannot go and do it over again. Christina McNichol was on the bus. At least we know now that he's hurting too, and he didn't just hurt us and then forget all about it. Mahoney faces the possibility of life in prison on each of the 27 murder counts. Dan Molina, NBC News, Carrollton, Kentucky. In business news this morning, the big three U.S. automakers have announced plans for huge layoffs next month. High inventories resulting from the worst auto sales in almost a decade have forced the layoffs. In an attempt to boost sales, the Chrysler Corporation is expected to announce a new round of sales incentives sometime today. And now, looking ahead to today's market day, here's the Wall Street Journal's Tom Herman. Tom, good morning. Good morning, John. We got some of those important statistics coming out today. What can we expect? Probably more signs of economic sluggishness. The economy is looking weaker and weaker with each report we get. You mentioned the auto layoffs. It's especially rough on companies in the manufacturing fields, and it's also very rough on Wall Street. One broker I talked to yesterday said a Christmas bonus this year means you get to keep your job another year. Wow. Well, we get all this bad news, and we've been hearing it day after day, bad earnings and so forth, yet the market continues to do pretty well. That's right, because people expect the Federal Reserve to come galloping to the rescue by cutting interest rates. That's a risky strategy, though, to bet on, and a lot of investors I've spoken to say, we don't want any part of it. We're going to invest in safe, solid U.S. Treasury bills and bonds, and we're also going to buy utility stocks. Yesterday, the Dow Jones utility average hit a record high. Well, thank you, Tom. Have a nice weekend. You too, John. There will be a little cheer this Christmas for people who hold shares in Mesa Petroleum. When we come back, Alan Abelson on the tough times facing Mesa and its colorful chairman, T. Boone Pickens. <laughs> You know, you read this and you think, this is a Surgeon General, I should listen to this stuff. But all this low-fat fiber... What are they really telling you? It's like they tell you how, but who's going to tell you what? One way to start your diet is new Kellogg's HeartWise. More soluble fiber than oat bran and a taste you'll actually enjoy. HeartWise. You know, I know a bowl of cereal isn't all there is to it. But at least it's something I can put my hands on. Somewhere to start. Take a word to the wise. with their cars for all sorts of reasons. If you lust for performance or long for value, it's time you flirted with a sob. What becomes of the broken hearted? What becomes of the broken hearted? The smart ones buy a sob. Tidal wave hits Oklahoma classroom. Sophomores climb Mount Everest. This is the highest mountain peak in the world. IBM is helping teachers teach and bring subjects to life with courseware developed with teachers for teachers. Courseware that complements a teacher's curriculum from kindergarten to high school. Five-year-old writes life story. Now available in paperback. Oh, I love this. This is great. A life with pictures. Low prices for natural gas have forced Mesa Limited Partnership to cancel its cash distributions and to sell some assets to reduce debt. Mesa is the energy company run by takeover strategist T. Boone Pickens. Our business reporter and Ballon, Barron's editor, Alan Abelson, joins us now to talk about this development. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, John. I thought T. Boone was supposed to be an expert in this area of good management. 
Well, he certainly knows how to tell other people how to run their companies. John, he doesn't seem to be doing a very good job at running his own. What's the problem? Well, the problem is several fold. As you mentioned, natural gas prices have come down a great deal. Certainly, uh, come down from about two dollars and sixty cents to a dollar fifty or sixty. But that is only half the story. The other problem is that his appetite was too big. He went out and acquired a lot of properties, took on about a billion and a half worth of debt, and that debt was eating him up alive. So the way, you know, who pays for it in the end? His shareholders. Those poor benighted shareholders. You know, T. Boone has a, a kind of an ad hoc group that goes around the country telling shareholders to rise and throw off your shackles and get rid of that old terrible management you're working for. Well, it's just the opposite here. I think shareholders are really taking it on the chin. The stock hit an all-time low yesterday, and they won't even be getting a cent of dividends next year. Well, now, this is a limited partnership, and mm -hmm. the tax law changed on limited partnerships. Does that come to play here? Well, I think it had some effect, but not really a whole heck of a lot. I think, basically, this was a bad guess on T. Boone's part. Of course, he spent a lot of time in Japan telling the Japanese what to do, that may be our best weapon. If he can convince them to run their companies the way he's running his, we'll be okay. Well, now, despite the fact that Mesa may not be doing so well, and obviously it isn't, uh, they're not uh, distributing a dividend here, but uh, what about T. Boot himself? How has he fared through this? Well, he's been kind of quiet. You know, he was a great, big, uh, scary person. He uh, used to go and say boo to a lot of corporate managements that paid him a lot of money to go away. He said he used to call you on the telephone from his well, airplane. occasionally, that's right. It was a great thrill to get a call at uh, 8 or 9 in the morning from T. Boone up there in the sky. He was headed toward heaven, I guess. But the fact of the matter is, John... We've got to go. We've got to go. That's the fact of the matter. <laughs> Thank you all. Have a nice weekend. Let's check in now with Joe Whitty. Joe? Thank you, John. Mother Nature is about to give the Northeast a one-two punch. A fast-moving store will blanket the Ohio Valley today with up to six inches of snow. And later today, a secondary development off the coast will cause a major snowstorm from New Jersey to Maine so that by tomorrow you can expect to be shoveling six inches or more of snow. Saturday, still stormy for New England and some strong cold winds behind that frontal system. Uh, sunshine in the, the uh, plains area, but it's going to be frigid cold. Temperatures well below freezing and wind chills well below freezing. Snow for the Rocky Mountain states there and the far west generally cool but partly to sunny skies there. Now on Sunday, expect some more snowy travel for the Rocky Mountain states, and Texas, which Saturday night late started with an ice problem, is gonna be in the middle of a very icy situation for travelers, Christmas shoppers, and what have you, and the eastern half of the country, sunny skies, but cold winds still pumping down over New England. And for the football games, Saturday and Sunday, it's gonna be windy for the Giants game on Saturday, Cincinnati frigid at game time at 17 degrees, and for San Diego, well, the Chargers are going to have to keep charging pretty fast to stay warm at Kansas City with a temperature near 13 degrees. Hope you have a warm weekend. See you on Monday. John? Thank you, Joe. And that's NBC News at Sunrise for this Friday morning. I'm John Palmer. We'll see you again on Monday. Have a very nice weekend.